All right, here we go. We're back. Episode number six, a fresh one, the uh, BD Outdoors podcast. Sitting next to my buddy and my colleague, Nate Lindsay here. Um, I'm Cameron Gamble, and we got a special episode for you guys today. We are joined by the men who started Captain's Concepts. How you guys doing? Doing good. What's doing good. On? This is uh, Matt Brawla and Gavin Harbour. They are two sport boat captains and entrepreneurs in San Diego to run two of the best boats around. You know, if you guys are familiar with any sort of sport fishing on the sport boats, uh, you've definitely heard of the San Diego and you've definitely heard of the Pacific Queen. So stoked to have you guys in today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, how's uh, how's everything been? I saw that you guys, San Diego, Matt, you guys just extended your schedule up until the end of November, right? Yeah, we've been online through November, but um, we extended our offshore trips um, but it d- just depends on reservations right now. So yeah. if people come, we'll we'll go out there. Yeah. But it looks like islands starting Saturday. Sick. Yeah. Yeah, it could be yeah. Pr- pretty probably hit or miss, right? With the with the you only have one day. You only have. Yeah, it yeah. makes it hard to stay on top of them. Yeah. And Gavin, you guys are running. You said up until Thanksgiving or so. Yeah, day before Thanksgiving. We usually we're like April first to day before Thanksgiving every year. So. We got a couple light trips, but we'll be out every day until, you know, day before Thanksgiving. Damn, that's a long season, though. April yeah. all the way through November. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. fuck, that's a lot, a lot of fishing. Crowd thins out once the mornings get cold. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's easy to wake up and fish when it's, like, 75 degrees at 7. Yeah. I noticed just the other day I was out and I woke up and it was, like, I don't know. I live inland a little bit. It was, like, 49 degrees no thanks like, what the hell <laughs> yeah <laughs> now nah, the seasons yeah. flop super quick i mean the water's just on the shore temp i fucking surfed this morning and it was 62 degrees or something it's like three days ago it was on 68 so i don't know what's going on yeah we but, drove through a lot of cold water coming out yeah, yeah. 63 62 yeah. degrees for a long time wow mm-hmm. a lot of time though we lose our like we lose our passengers before we lose fish you know mm. like if we were having this same fishing in the springtime, like people would be all over it. It's going good right now. Yeah, yeah I there's feel good like. fishing. Like you know, a lot of times this time of year we'll start to get like a week of slow fishing, and I think maybe some people think like, oh, that's it, it's over. But you know, if we have a week of slow fishing in the spring or summer, it's like, oh, it'll get good again. You yeah. Know? But like, it, yeah, there's good fishing. It's just, you know, people start. They've already fished a bunch of times, or it's like. Like for me, it's like it's hunting season now. So people want to go hunting. <laughs> or they sure. got they got yeah. Thanksgiving plans. They got Christmas yeah, presents to buy. Holidays, but most of the time, full. I would say that we run out of passengers before we run out of fish for yeah. sure. Yeah, I feel especially with those uh, the sport boat clientele, right? They're probably a lot like you know a certain amount of trips or money towards what they're doing. And some of these guys right now are hopping on those eight days and stuff oh, yeah. like that, going yeah. further south, warmer weather, warmer water, different type of fishing. Um, but I mean, Nate, you brought it up multiple times in the last year or so. You know the fish are always still there. We just stopped fishing them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think to an extent, I think that the like <clears throat> the volume of the fish goes down. But I mean, I had multiple times I was out in like January and February and would look to my left and it's like, oh, a bluefin just puddled. You know, like I think that that there's a, a number of them that stay off our coast. I think the whole like theory that they just completely vanish is kind of false. But yeah, no. I mean, it depends I mean? on the time of year too. You know? Yeah, or like, or it depends on the year. Like we've definitely seen good fishing in like January where we're we're yeah. doing like a colonnette trip, and then all of a sudden we run into a big school of bluefin. Yeah. But then we've also seen like times where like skiffs or something say they see fish, but then in a boat, when, in a sport boat where you have sonar and all that other stuff, you look at it and you're like, yeah, well, you saw five fish over there jump, and that was yeah, that was, what all was there. Them. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's exactly. It, you know? So low That's volume cool. stuff. But, but we know for sure, like, from the airplanes and stuff that are flying for the Mexican saners, a lot of fish go south, but it's still not that far, you know, maybe a couple no. hundred yeah. miles, yeah. you know, it's not far. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's when I think just having a bigger boat, like, you guys have a really cool advantage in that you can go down there. And even on, like, the private boat level, like, if you have a boat that's, you know, 40 to 50 foot, you can go down and fish colonnette, like, all year and rock fish and catch yellows and stuff like that. And It's like really the skiff guys where it's like when we, when that easy like foamer volume and like when all the fish dope is going around and everyone feels like they know where to go once that confidence is gone, a lot of the private boaters kind of like, they kind of just, and and these guys are, you know, 
They crush it. So the, whenever you see like a big line of thirty parkers chasing a sport boat, it's probably one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, how do you guys how do you guys deal with that? I know it's like a kind of a thing, right? Follow the sport boats. I mean, of course, the better guys aren't doing that, but no. I know that I, you see videos all the time. I, you know, you worked on sport boats as well, so we always have people fucking getting so close. Like as a captain, how do you deal with that? Seriously, I'm a, I'm a yeller. I like to yell at them, but I'm a yeller. <laughs> don't throw, don't throw yeah, them a but it, it doesn't do anything. They can't really hear me most of the time, but it makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I used to be a yeller, but it doesn't. It, it, it's worse if anything. I yeah. found like honestly, if you're like, hey man, you're a little too close. Would you mind just like sliding over here? Usually they'll kind of go. I away usually a give bit. them that first, and then if they start chirping at me, I chirp back. Yeah, I feel like yeah. For the last couple <laughs> years it's got better though. I, th- I think less for us at least. Ways. I've noticed less. Less skiffs, you know, chasing us or following us or getting on us. You know, it seems like maybe guys that now that skiff fishing has been so popular for the past like five or six years that like some guys are actually now starting to realize like, oh man, I can go out here and find fish and catch fish on my own. I don't yeah. have to do this. For sure. There's definitely people who've gotten better at it. That's yeah. For sure. But there's always like that, dude, if you're like on the nine mile bank on a Saturday in August, like it, it's <laughs> yeah. on, you know, like yeah. someone, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's no rules anymore. Yeah. 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 That's funny. Oh, that's super funny. <clears throat> oh, so Captain's Concepts, that's uh, that's pretty sick. So you guys basically started a subscription-based service that teaches anglers how to be more better fishermen. So explain a little bit to us about, like, where that came from and how long you guys been around and how it's going. Yeah, so we, what, it's been two years now? I think uh, right almost at, right two at, years, yeah. Yeah, right around two years since we started. And basically, you know, with, like, the influx of, like, our bluefin fishing that we've had lately you know like 10 years ago you come on a sport boat with your 25 pound your 40 pound a box of hooks a box of hooks you <laughs> know maybe, a... maybe like a mega bait or something and like you were good for whatever you yeah. know and then now obviously like with all the different size bluefin we fish at night we fish during the day you know we got knife jigs sinker rigs like you know the knife jig thing alone is just like the brawler rig oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a million different ways now that that we fish for bluefin so we found like a lot of people coming on the boat like willing to do whatever it takes but having not knowing what to buy you know or what to have or how to fish it or anything like that you know and there's guys that do that already but there's no guys like matt and i that make a living off of fishing you know that we're mm-hmm. We're, we're on the boat, you know, six, seven days a week. You know, I usually am on the boat for like a month at a time. Matt's on the boat at, yeah, at, at least, five days, at a least week. five, six days a week, you know. And, um, and we're not going out there with our buddies that are good fishermen, you know. we Granted, we take some excellent fishermen. But we also take people that are terrible at fishing, you know, Never but they want to learn, you know. So yeah. we – and also a lot of it is um, super updated information. So we would get guys that come on the boat. And they're like, man, my friend was out here last month. He said, he gave me all of his tackle. And it's like, man, that would have been great for last month, you know. But this this is completely different now. So it's just a way for us to get to our people to have them, like, bring the right equipment. But um, more than just bringing the right equipment is knowing how to use it, knowing when to use it, yeah, you know, it and knowing one. why. You know, knowing why am I using this size lure versus this size lure. Or, mm-hmm. oh, the fish are acting this way. Oh, I remember that one video that, that Matt was talking about. I need to tie this on and then, you know, then catch a few fish. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's funny. I, I, some people, I mean, I guess it's probably the people who don't fish that much. Um, but sometimes, you know, they're not having a good trip and they get this thought in their head that maybe the crew might not be trying as hard because they're just over it or whatever. But it's like, based on Captain's mm-hmm. concepts, it's kind of proof, right? Like, you want people to catch fish because you want to catch fish. Your living is yeah. catching fish. Yeah. You never want my livelihood. Yeah, yeah, you never you want someone not to catch fish. And I remember we used to struggle with that on the prowler all the time, like way back in the day. People would be, oh, you know, Captain's not trying, all deckhands aren't trying. It's like, no, nah, like, you just got to fucking land it if you're going to hook it or <laughs> yeah. know what you're doing or at least. Well, that's, tri- that's private charter. That's the problem with private charters, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, like. The amount of times I hooked like 14 fish this year and we landed five. Yeah. You know, it's just light line tuna fishing when they're picky. It's tough. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Fishing 20 pound for 40 pound bluefin, you're going to get bit off a lot if you don't know how to fight the fish. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of that, but it's also a lot of, uh, like for that example, like it's it's knowing like maybe not to fish twenty five pound. Yeah. You know, for sure. <laughs> stick it out with this, or uh, you know, like we we talk about lure fishing a lot. Like I like to fish a lot of lures. Matt likes to fish a lot of lures. And one thing that 
why we fish a lot of lures for bluefin, I guess when you get like to the nuts and bolts of it is like, instead of fishing 20 pound with bait, like I could hook them on this lure with hundred pound, right. you know, with yeah. hundred pound and a big ass hook. <laughs> and like, it doesn't matter anymore. Well, now they're you coming know. in. Yeah. yeah. They're coming in, you know, I feel you, like I got, I consistently on like bait stops hooked a lot of fish this year on just cold snipers, just burning them when they're really picky. Oh yeah. Yeah. They oh, just yeah. want something moving quick, you know, yeah. and it works really well. There's, there's a time of year where the cold sniper is king, the king. Yeah. yeah by far. Yeah. I would say overall, probably like the first like half or third of our season, like we're fishing, fishing a lure. Lures. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah. fishing lures, yeah. you know. And then like like for for this year and kind of last year towards the end, you know, like I was there's days I don't even fish a lure at all. You know, I'm just fishing bait all day long. Yeah, but definitely like springtime or like early summer bluefin, like they'll be they'll be a week straight where I don't touch a bait. You know, nighttime but, too, because yeah, so nighttime, much of the fishing daytime, is at night. anything. You know, yeah. how crazy is that for you guys? Like seeing like so much emphasis put it, being put on fishing at night now because we understand more about like just the bluefin feeding patterns and stuff like that. Is that like a huge strain on you guys? It's Not gotta, for me. We don't fish at nighttime. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, it's um, you know, we always as as like. We always talk shit about it as captains, like, man, I wish they would bite during the day, you know. But, like, we just more, like, the whole fleet has, like, adapted to it more, you know, now. Like, yeah. before, like, we'd fish at night, and it was, like, the captain doesn't sleep during the day. Like, the captain fishes the boat during mm-hmm. the day. But now that we've done this and it's a thing, we've kind of, like, adapted our schedules, you know. So, I would, like, the first half of the year, like, I never slept at night at all, you know. Like, never Crazy. once. Unless the boat was traveling um, in or out or, like, we had a limit. Like, I did not. But I would sleep during the day because that, you know, I just felt like as a captain, my responsibility was to be awake at like the best time to catch fish. For sure. Yeah. yeah. But the nighttime thing, honestly, is like, is just been a blessing for multiple reasons for us because um, we're able to hook them on heavy line all the time. Like yeah. we Super just talked heavy. about. Yeah. Like we're fishing, <laughs> we're fishing, you know, 30 wide size reels, you know, yeah. big reels. We're fishing heavy line, um, you know, big hooks. So we're able to land them. And also, um, you know, there's definitely people that are better at nighttime fishing uh, than other people, you know, but nighttime fishing is able, a lot of like newbie anglers that I would come out in the springtime and maybe never have a chance of getting a bite levels are going home field. with the limit. It, yeah. yeah. Levels yeah. the playing field. It's so. a sim- yeah. The fishing style is so simple. It's pretty simple. Like there's definitely guys that will come on my boat and, and that are very good at it, that there's some, there's they some tricks to it, actually but gym. it also, but yeah, but it also, you know, it definitely levels the playing field. So yeah, yeah. it's like, it's a blessing. I think it's great. Yeah. yeah. It it's really a pain cool. in the ass, but, yeah, <laughs> but it's good. You know, yeah, you get like, some tangles for sure. Oh, <laughs> follow yeah. your line. We take, we take 34 people. We're one of the few boats still overnight fishing that takes 34 people that's and like crazy, uh, dude. 34 people nighttime fishing is insane that's why yeah, like i tell awesome. people all the time people in the daytime is pretty interesting too yeah it's insane like <laughs> yeah. people are like oh man you can catch so down. many at night but it's like dude no we catch way more fish with 24 people versus 34 people yeah, oh, yeah. for sure we catch way more but, kill ratio goes up oh yeah yeah you're just more efficient mm-hmm. yeah but yeah 34 people at, at night is fucking wild (laughs) it's wild that's that's crazy though like adjusting the schedules and all that like i remember the days of what we used to joke about it like winding in the trollers cutting fish it's like there was no there was no shot of nighttime fishing like we just didn't do it now it's like all right who's napping here who's napping there what like when are you gonna be awake and you know uh, that's that's crazy but for you matt which is like the day in day out Mm -hmm. grind I mean, that's pretty nuts, too, because you're going, what, 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then waking up and doing it again and again and again. God, I wish it was 6 p.m. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're bluefin fishing. A lot of times we're tying up at 7, 8 o'clock. No. Um, but I hate when I hear the nighttime you guys are catching them because it's usually not good for the daytime. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rarely do you both catch them at. There were some days. Yeah. But, but rarely is it like, does he, he usually text, text me in the me morning? In the morning and it's just like, oh, it's going to be a long yeah. day. Yeah. 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 So that, does that also help you like kind of like develop a plan the next morning because you kind of know where everyone's at and what they're doing somewhat yeah definitely talking to those guys who are out there before us and we kind of eliminates water and knows where we know where we're supposed to be or where we're not supposed to be yeah. a lot of times man yeah the, the daytime stuff is st- or daytime stuff is tough um we went on ricky and i went on a, a full day trip i think we traveled four hours five hours to fish for two i mean you know oh, yeah. of course we fucked them up we wouldn't have gone that far yeah you know? um we spend a lot of time, yeah, 40 miles. Yeah, a lot of time, a lot <laughs> yeah. of time moving, you know, that, that stuff's crazy. Um, 
But yeah, so I mean, okay, back to the captain's concept stuff. Um, where you guys? So you have an Instagram. Um, the 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 subscription lives on, on Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, so okay. they sign up through Patreon, and that's where we communicate with everybody and post our videos and everything. Cool. And are you doing like consistently throughout the season, like once a month, or just here or as during the season when we're really fishing? It's usually like we each post one once a week. Yeah, oh, really? roughly once a week. Yeah, yeah. that's sometimes, super huge. And yeah. it just depends. Like, it, sometimes it might be slightly less. Sometimes it might be slightly more. Like, if we make a video, like, oh, this is how we're fishing, and then you know how fishing changes, mm -hmm. and, and then it's like, okay. You know, maybe not never mind this video, but like, hey, we just got on this new area of fish. This is how we caught them. Like, this is how you need to be ready to go tonight. Yeah. Awesome. As soon as I see something happening where it's like, oh, that guy just figured something out, it's a video that night. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. And then um, yeah. another cool thing is um, like we communicate with everybody too. So mm -hmm. we get a lot of guys like, hey, I'm coming out, uh, you know, on, I'm coming out next week on a three day trip. I was thinking about bringing this tackle. How does this look? And we'll, and he'll list off this, the guy just sent me this this morning. He'll list yeah. off all of his tackle and I'll say, yes, that looks good. Or you, you could leave this rod at home or add oh. this rod to this. So that's been super helpful. That is uh, an insane service. Yeah, that is, that is well, that, huge, right? Yeah. Now. Guys, if you're listening, these are two of the best captains in San Diego who will literally tell you if your gear is legit. Before yeah. you get on the boat. Before you get on <laughs> yeah. the boat, you yeah, get that's berated nuts. for having just all wrong stuff. Yeah, I think that's super cool. And like a lot of people, I, I just know in like my personal life, a lot of people want to get into fishing. Yeah. But one thing they don't want to deal with is they've all like stated, I just don't want to go on a boat and be the guy who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Mm -hmm. And you guys really offer a solution for like the newer fishermen to learn things at an accelerated rate without having to like constantly be on the water. Cause people are busy, man. They have like jobs, they have families and stuff like that. And, and you know, everyone watches YouTube videos now and yeah. is consuming video well, media. So this is perfect for like so many people. Yeah. And we get a little bit of all of it. Like we have some people that sign up that, you know, they're going to go on their first fishing trip. But we also, I have a lot of my regulars that I would consider to be some of like the best fishermen around. <laughs> and they some, just you know, want more information. No, and they look at it and I'm like, and in my head, I'm like, man, this guy, you know, he might not need this. And then he'll come up to me on his next trip. He'll be like, oh man, like I learned so much. And I'm yeah. like, oh, holy shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's so awesome. it, you, and even like one video, if you get a new guy watching it and you get an advanced guy watching it. They'll both, they may get different takeaways from it, you know, but they, Definitely. they learn a lot from it. True. And the thing too is we, what we were talking about is, is, you know, you can go on YouTube and, and absorb all of sorts of content, but like <laughs> a lot of this may be guys that fish like twice a year, you know, we're, we're, we're fishing like every day, no, not, every single day. That's what I was getting it's, at. It's, big like, time, it's a huge there's difference. There's a huge difference between like, like you said, like just going on YouTube and typing in, how do I do X, Y, or Z or whatever. And then having two of the best captains telling you like, this is what we're seeing work. Yeah. Like yeah. right now, this is what we're seeing work. And not, not only that, it's so like you're getting just like me personally. Cause I'm like fishing all the time. Like I'm hooking in hand. If yeah, people there's fish, 34 people on each boat and yeah, we're watching we're, that person. Yeah. We're yeah. watching everybody. So we're like, this guy did this. It did not work at all, you know, or like <laughs> yeah. we get people all the time that bring something new out and they're like, what do you think about this? I'm like, I don't know, try it, you know, and then yeah. I watch how they're doing it. I'm like, oh man, this works great. And then we, we forward that information on. Mm -hmm. So it's not just me or just him or it's it's like, it's everybody. And I learned, like I watch his stuff. I learned stuff from Matt's videos Yeah, I watched a bunch time. of his yeah. stuff too. So <laughs> yeah. What about like that speed, speed jigging and slow pitch and all that stuff do you guys have are you guys geared up for that oh yeah that? i've seen that i've seen that oh, on yeah. the front of the san diego oh, yeah. just going ham oh, with yeah. the jigs right. I, I have i just got another rod i have probably eight rods yeah right. i think i have yeah. five and that's been a huge one this last few yeah, years springtime and a, oh yeah and, and i was one. fishing it before i even had one of those rods like the yeah. the yeah, yeah you could do it without that rod too yeah. interesting it makes it a lot nicer but yeah but, but we're definitely at like we were kind of at the i wouldn't say forefront but we were right there when that first started yeah. coming out we were on it and another thing that's really cool is like uh gary on instagram the dial warrior he's yep. probably like the best ever crushes it yeah he comes on my boat like 12 15 times a year and he'll you know? come wow. so a few like, times with me too i wow. picked the shit out of that dude's brain on everything and he has it like he has a Dumb. down and he just never uh, stops you know yeah he's he's, he's sad that's what it. i've heard about him is that he the boat just is stopped goes. he's fishing yeah, yeah that's like crazy. Yeah, he's relentless <laughs> but he's he's like he's very good he's yeah. got some strong he's arms relentless, that. Dude. Shit, that's a yeah. lot of yeah. well, that's one of the things about that tackle that helps a lot too it's it's way nicer on you yeah like, lighter and yeah. lighter you could fish it all day and even pulling on the fish it's 
way better. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a lot different. It's way different than like the rest of like Southern California's fishery on like how you fish, how you fight fish. It's like so different than everything else. Yeah, if 100%. you're gonna do it like efficiently, you know. Yeah, you're not dropping a knee. It's not a rail rod. It's yeah, really exactly. Different. I've seen we fish with some Florida guys out here, and he was like pointing. The, yeah. like pointing the rod straight down to where it wasn't even bending yeah. and all of the pressure was just on the reel itself yeah, yeah, yeah. that's was, why you spend so much on those yeah that's why you buy yeah. those nice reels because yeah. like the you, you're just using the torque of the reel like yeah. those, those jigging master reels yeah yeah i mean that stuff is taking off around here too and i think that slowly more and more it's going to be you know a couple years ago, you might see one or two of those rods on a two-day trip, and now it's probably 10 or 15. We have and trips I bet it's where everyone be... on the boat has them. Yeah. yeah. Really? That's oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah we, have a lot of, yeah, we have a lot of those. People are picking up on it for sure. Yeah. Well, everywhere but else it's... in the world fishes like that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're just a little behind on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been pretty spoiled, like, <coughs> in Southern California with live bait, you know, with the bait company 100%. the way it is. Yeah. It's, like, there's no other place in the world that has... Yeah, access to that. live bait like yeah. we do you know so we've been definitely taking it well you know we take advantage of it for sure <laughs> yeah, yeah but, pull up get a couple scoops yeah and exactly catch it yourself. yeah it's yeah. not like in, you know other places around the world where you have to hopefully catch your own bait yeah. maybe not get that I much mean, yeah the whole pro the whole idea of like a sport boat fleet without reliable baits kind of it's crazy. nothing yeah, yeah it wouldn't, nothing. wouldn't happen how does that work for you guys because i I remember a little bit about, you know, this lid's for long range guys, this lid over here is for the, the private boaters and this and that. Like, is your relationship with the bait barge or those guys, can that significantly change trips and stuff? Like compared, it's like wondering if you guys do so well, like, do you think you know those guys better or is everyone getting the same bait? I mean, we, we go every day, so it's different for, and we're loading it heavy, so we just need our bait to last for a couple hours for the most part, so. Mm -hmm. That's a big factor for at least my boat. True. I know with the bait company, I w they don't have like any favorites. But if you if you throw a big fit or something <laughs> yeah. at those guys, you know, like un a lot of time too, like the guys that are giving you the bait, like they have nothing to do with the quality yeah. you're catching. No. Yeah, you know, 100%. So yeah, but I the only time there. I've heard some <laughs> yeah. stories is like, like right, someone guy. will like light one of those guys up and he'll be like, you know, fuck this guy for the next yeah. trip, you know. Yeah. But for sure, no, yeah. like it's it's a uh, it's a huge part of like for me at least for being you know going up to like three and a half day trips is just like bait management like knowing when to use it um when the bait's tough knowing that like less is more you know like don't load the tanks let you know it's it is definitely a huge part of like a multi-day boat captain is managing the bait knowing when to use it when to not use it because like you know like matt matt just goes out and can fucking throw it all over the side <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and, well that's you know. a, it kind of depends like if i know we're gonna go out there and see something right away and our first stop might be our only stop i'm gonna load it heavy and we're gonna throw it at them yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but if i know we might have a few stops or having a good healthy bait is key then we might load a different well how much bait do you hold on the san diego uh depends on the quality but anywhere from like a 125 aside on like light, light swings yeah yeah uh, aside two tanks so you hold yeah whatever 250 two, two yeah well, I, we're taking the same amount of bait but we have to make that last for three and a half days and you're making it last for six hours yeah and we so that's the a difference. lot of times we don't go home with any you don't bait. have a tank in the bow making it rain. yeah we have a tank in the bow it takes like 20 scoops uh, okay. yeah okay. but that's Shit one thing beat up anyway yeah we use it first and it's garbage but yeah no so we hold probably about 260 270 you know so we hold a little more but we also do longer trips yeah but that's one thing we're we're adding some slammers this year so we'll be able to hold that's hopefully like another 150 scoops i'm hoping oh, which nice. make a huge difference yeah. yeah definitely yeah i know andrew added a slammer what was it two years ago or whatever and that really changed the game especially even i mean he doesn't even do anything over a two and a half day um maybe a three day but still i, I couldn't imagine the stress on you guys trying to manage that yeah, like oh tough. my god it's rolling what do we do if I, yeah. oh my god yeah, that's tough. Um, what about this is interesting, interesting topic for being on a boat fishing with thirty four four people. What about kite, balloon fish? You guys do that quite frequently or no? I'd say we do it less now. Less mm -hmm. um, less on like open party trips. I think uh, for our people it's when it first started, it was you know, people were into it, but then I think enough people went out and like saw that, you know, and I feel like now our people would like all oh, they would rather get a stop where they could fly line fish for you know 30 40 pounders than than uh 
then do that. We still do a lot of it, like on our charters. Like we get a lot of charters that really want to do that. Bring their own. Well, you can yeah, have bring their so own. many baits too with X amount of people. Yeah, you know, everyone yeah, like wants we'll, to be doing stuff. Yeah, yeah, like we'll. I mean, we will fish two kites, two baits. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you have the best day ever, it's hard to get everyone. In, yeah, you know, I mean that's still two numbers fish. out of a hat. You know. Yeah. Everyone Our else. Our main is kite like, deal is like the double trouble thing on my boat. So mm-hmm. we're just trying to get bites for people who probably won't get their own fish yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that makes sense so uh, you're on like a stop where it's kind of thick and you just shove one out where everyone yeah, else yeah they're is boiling lining. and it's like we're just picking at them we're catching we're hooking two to four at a time and i can get away from the deck and fish a kite bait yeah mm, or just awesome. have it out there for, and i could fish it and walk around and help people and stuff so yeah 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 the yeah. kite the the double trouble is nice in that aspect is you could you know as captains like you watch you know like that guy struggling like he's yeah. not he might not get a bite today where you can hook him one on a kite on, yeah. on 100 even if pounds. i'm casting him out they might yeah. not get a bite yeah he's gonna struggle you know so you can hook one on on 100 pound or 150 pound line with a kite and that guy could go home with a fish yeah i made his or trip they, or yeah exactly. we get a lot of kids and like women and children yeah. and stuff it's yeah. like okay i got a victim for this one yeah yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah. funny oh uh, yeah how was the uh how was the yellow fin this year i kind of missed that I was gone for a little bit. I like feel like I saw it on Instagram, and it was like they were big. September, they September. were big. They were gnarly big. Yeah, yeah they were yeah, big. Yeah, ha- watching people who never fought a tuna before on light gear fighting a forty. Oh, they just get wrecked. Fin, yeah, they get smoked. They get wrecked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the, <laughs> they get wrecked. Saturday we caught them pretty good, and it was like we stopped the boat, and for twenty minutes I was like, we're, we're busy, but we have not caught a fish yet. We're still skunked. Like this, wow. these things are too big. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Half the boat ones. hooked up and. It took 20 minutes for us to land something. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So cool, though, to see a, like, really healthy, nice, grade yellow yeah. fin. No, that was cool. I, there was uh, a long period there where we were – that was, like, what we wanted to catch. Like, we were bluefin off to the side because the, the possibility of getting, like, a big stop where you can catch, like, 150 of them. And a lot of the time, they're bigger than the bluefin we were catching. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And they're cool. That you know, they're just badass. They boil like right next to the boat. You know, yeah. Like you get on a good school of those, man. That was those that was are, good those stuff. Were badass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those things are badass. That's awesome. Yeah. So, like personally, what is your guys' favorite style of fishing? I like a plunker drift where you stop the boat and five to eight <laughs> going for all day and then just go home. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it's per, it's good pace. Too. But don't you that too though? Kind of um, you. I mean, you guys have good clientele, both you guys, because of your kind of name in the industry for the most part, I would say. I guess I can't really fully judge, but those plunker bites, right? Like, you're doing a lot better if everyone on the boat knows what they're doing. Um, I like the plunker bites because we can help the people. More. Yeah. Mm. That's the biggest thing for me where, like, my crew members have time to pack. We cast and pass all day long. Our crew members are constantly okay. grabbing. Yeah. Let me get a bait on for you and cast it out yeah. for something. Same thing. So it's not all yeah. hectic at once. Well, you have yeah. yeah. Another th- thing is you have time where you could, like, teach people, too, you know? Like, yeah. you'll help a guy, and then you'll be like, hey, do this. And then all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, he comes back. He goes, I do what you said, man, and I got one. Yeah. Rather than, like, yeah, we'll mayhem. have, like, wide open mayhem stops where the crew is just, like, on, like, Con- damage control mode, you know what I mean? And then at the end of the stop, you still will still have a handful of guys that never caught one. Yeah, you know? yeah. I feel like th- that's when the people are pretty bummed too. And you like look over, and some guy just saw one dude rope eight of them, and he's yeah. like, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the he fuck got <laughs> sawed off three times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they have PTSD afterwards. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. True, no, true. the plunker, when I first like started working on boats, I was like, I want everyone to have one on all the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then, like, now that I've done it more, I'm like, No, this is it's like. If you can get like a long plunker like that, it's definitely better. Yeah. Like the the quality of the fish is better. Oh yeah. Because they like they go in the fish hold slowly, slowly. you know, rather than fifty at a time. They're mm-hmm. going in like three or four at a time, which like a lot of people are really into their fish quality now more than mm-hmm. ever, you know. Um, and just being able to help everybody and like not the not the chaos, like the vibe walk is off the, so yeah, much better. People <laughs> walk off the boat like after one of those gnarly stops sometimes, and they're just like angry you know yeah, like they're still dude. all jacked up those days when we had 55 people and we'd catch limits in like an hour and it's like the people were like what just happened yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's nuts yeah oh uh, yeah i mean that dorado the previous season was a lot like that that was absolutely insane where they're in california waters and there's 280 fish coming over the rail and oh, yeah. it's too much and for yeah. those <laughs> things like, dude, that's a lot of doritos i mean yeah. <laughs> landing 280 of those things Yo, you in hook an like hour that's a lot of yeah. annoying yeah. gaff shots is yeah. what that is i you mean yeah. like 500 of those things yeah it's absolutely yeah. insane and then the crew's cutting fish for five and a half hours on the way home um, yeah 
foot long. How are you guys with the the processing and fly on the boat? You guys both cut fish on the boat. The we crew? cut we cut fish. Okay. Yeah, but we do it on day and a half, and so that's pretty much it. Okay. But pretty much like our our clientele doesn't really do it anymore. Yeah. You know, they take their fish to five star yeah. or fishermen's processing for the most part. You know. Yes. Yeah, it depends. We get some trips where we we fillet a lot of fish. Um, kind of what's throwing like a big wrench in that is like nighttime fishing too. You know, like we can't mm-hmm. have the crew like the crew can't fish all night and then the second night of the and then work all day and then fish half the night and then start cutting fish at you know midnight they just can't yeah. do it and so a lot of times we'll just tell people like hey um like if we have a charter that all of them wants their fish cut i'm like that we'll cut your fish but like the second night of the trip like we're not night fishing no matter what because we can't do you know we can't do both yeah, yeah. it's too much well, that's which good. like a lot of the fleet has done that i know a lot of boats that just don't cut fish at all anymore yeah yeah I've noticed, sense. You notice some of that too i mean the long range guys have always kind of been like that but even their smaller trips or shorter trips they won't and i mean just because I'll, I'll fill in for andrew every now and then yeah. and I've just this year i've noticed like Going from it used to be eighty percent of the people get their fish cut. Now it's like way lower. Yeah. It's yeah. way lower. It's yeah, we like, like maybe tw- if if we offer it, maybe twenty five percent of the boat. Yeah, yeah. and well, then it, we also don't. Uh, no matter how long of a trip is, if it's over like six, if it's like a bluefin over like sixty pounds, we won't even offer. It. We won't mm-hmm. even do it. And I, I highly respect that. I've Just because like the, yeah. the the fish and game laws for how we can flay them on the boat, like to take like that Unreal. nice 60 pound fish and to like have to give it to a passenger like that is in just lame you know? yeah. yeah in a trash bag <laughs> yeah. with with its stomach and its collar and all everything yeah. in yeah, one bag it. yep yeah it's uh, you know i'm just it's like doing it i know that guy's gonna go home be tired and some of that fish is gonna go to waste you know For i'd rather sure. force him and then get like he gets a good product you know he'll yeah. be happier at the end yeah at the end of the day he'll be happier you yeah. know because he actually gets a good nice product that he could like give away or you know yeah. rather than just like here's your <laughs> fish trash of a lifetime bag. <laughs> yeah. trash bag here's you know? your entire fish yeah. of a lifetime yeah. Yeah. yeah every part damn that's crazy and I, I do feel like too with like the the processors doing such a good job and the turnaround being so quick it doesn't necessarily take away from the crew's intake of cider or anything like that because these types of people generally know the program right like it's like like i feel like before with all patty fishing and stuff like that like you would want to cut fish because that goes straight into the tip jar you yeah. know but like when dude when there's a hundred pound fish you have to cut like it's so stressful and you know like you just said you're giving yeah. it to him in a trash bag yeah. at that point you're like i don't even i don't want, even want that side yeah. money i'd rather just you know it's a you, different experience like yeah. you know those big blue and it's an experience like even if you're not catching one you're involved with everything mm-hmm. yeah if you're on the boat mm-hmm. fishing yeah. is just like changed a lot in the last like five years you know it went from like just in the short time that i've been on boats it went from like get as many people as you can get as many fish as you can like you know just like catch a bunch of fish people are just like kind of aggro get them off the boat do it again now it's more like it's way more like service orientated you know what i mean like we like whether you flay the guy's fish or not on my boat like you, if you give him good service like he's gonna tip you're gonna make the same amount of money you know so i would rather like have my crew go to sleep and not have to do that and if they provide good service like the guy's going to give us the same we're going to make the same amount of money yeah exactly. and they're and they're going to get to sleep more and not have to deal with that yeah 100%. yeah i mean i remember back when i first started with buzz it was like same thing it was quantity over quality not well i mean not in the sense over quality just more so like you, you just want to get as many fish as possible because you want everyone to leave happy, but that doesn't didn't always really work. Yeah. You know, and then when no, you eat doesn't. shit, you eat shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. like a three or four fish day and they're all little rat yellowtail. Yeah. And you travel to the finger and back. Like, yeah. fuck, dude. Yeah. Like, people do not like that. Um, but yeah, I really I really like kind of the way the industry has turned that aspect, like you said, more of a service rather than... Yeah, a, it's, it's experience. You know, yeah, like and with social media and stuff too, you know your passengers, you get repeat people, and then yeah, they bring yeah. people, and all of a sudden there's this like bigger, denser community of like people who actually give a shit, whereas yeah. it's, it's not as... I don't know, fake as it was before, like just catching someone fish and then see you next year. Yeah, no, it's definitely know? turned way better for, at least I can speak for my boat, you know, the difference that I've yeah. seen in a lot of boats too, you know. It's, yeah, no, for sure. Now different. that we're fishing those big bluefin too, it's like people come out and it's like, Dude, you, pro- you might not catch one, but you're going to see some stuff you've probably never seen before. Yeah. You're going to witness someone catch a fish of a lifetime and it's all about camaraderie and like, and like you know getting the opportunity the, yeah, for the bigger yeah. Ones, like just try and getting the opportunity how, how is that for you matt going on a day trip knowing that the fishing could potentially be tough when you're kind of giving that spiel in the morning while they're scooping bait are you 
pretty transparent, like, hey, this is what's going on, or you usually lean on the side of optimistic? Or how do you, how oh, do you I give you? a warning before we leave the dock. That <laughs> <laughs> every every morning when we're offshore fishing, it's high risk, high reward fishing. We might not stop the boat, we might not catch a fish, we might not see a fish, and we might get home late. Yeah, <laughs> but awesome. you might stop the boat and see the best fishing yeah. you have ever seen in your life. Yeah, yeah. you know. And, That's why I play the game. and myself and my crew are going to try the hardest to find that yeah. 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. How many uh, how many guys do you each have in your crew overall? We have like a lot of filling guys, but like there's yeah. a core of like three, four full time guys, not counting cooks. But we take okay. three deck hands and a cook plus myself. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we take a total of six. So it's um, captain, second captain, a cook, and three deck hands. And then I have. Um, Basically, a spare cook, another cook that they the two cooks cycle out, and then I have another um, deckhand. So I always have a cook that's off and a crew member that's off. But then I have, um, and now I think there's like five licenses on the boat, you know? So, like, mm. if I take a trip off, um, Billy will run the boat, and then John will night drive, or, or vice versa. John will run the boat, Billy will night drive. And everyone can kind of switch around to where whoever takes a trip off, there's always a guy full time that could take their spot. Yeah. Solid. Yeah, I, that, that's huge with the fishing throughout the night too. Is having two guys at home rested up, so when they cycle yeah. through, it's not that no one's dragging ass on stuff. Like we were talking about adjusting our schedule, I would say now, you know, everybody does it different. But on my boat, nighttime fishing bluefin versus like just normal fishing and then flaying fish, crew gets way more sleep now, mm-hmm. way more sleep because, uh, like, I have a crew member sleeping like all the time. Because, you know, it's not just like just nighttime fishing. A lot of times it's like you never know when it's going to be, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I want to like keep my crew rested all the time. That way when we get that opportunity, I can have everybody up and know yeah. that nobody's tired. So honestly, like in the in the first years of nighttime fishing, like, yeah, we were all smoked, you know, from like staying up for a long time. But now we've got it down to where like my crew's getting like more sleep than ever before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I'm sure. I'm the, sure the, the nighttime, <laughs> the yeah, nighttime fishing, the the guy that gets the least sleep is the captain for sure. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. For sure. That, that's awesome. Well, yeah, man. Wow, we covered a lot in a short amount of time. Is there anything you guys want to add about captain's concept? Anything people could be looking forward to? Anything you guys got coming up? Well, yeah, just a little more about it. it you know, we have shit, probably 150 videos up or something. Something like that. We have wow. like 100 wow. yeah. something videos up over the last. Uh, two years look so, back at yeah you can look at all of them um anything from our first ones to now you can watch you know um the progression of all of them you could search a topic you can ask us about a topic we could either make a video about it or point you to a video that if you haven't um, been on board with us the whole time that you can check out um the the big thing i think is a lot of the interaction with us that people like you know we get a lot of people that are asking us a lot of questions um from anything from what tackle i should buy um like you know that's been a big savior i've seen people come on the boat all the time that have bought all this tackle and then once they've got better at fishing or more experience they end up throwing all that tackle away or selling it and then buying good stuff where we could just point you in the right direction right off the bat the first time save you a whole lot of money and waste yeah same thing with lures man we load these guys tackle boxes on the boat all the time they weigh a (laughs) hundred pounds you know i've seen some pretty rad lure (laughs) hybrids yeah customizations so we could sit you know you could save a lot of time and effort and money just on that kind of stuff just watching our stuff the big thing i'm buying the lures yeah i'm covering everything before you you need to buy it yeah (laughs) Yeah. you know and like we had uh one of the guys that's an excellent fisherman that comes out he's been fishing forever fishes a lot and he's on our stuff and he was telling me he's like dude i've I have been doing this for 20 years, you know, and like it took me that long to get to this level of where I'm at. Whereas if this was around back then in six months, I could have, you know, maybe not be this experience, but I could have like learned all this. Stuff. Oh yeah. 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 yeah so the time on the water is so valuable. And I know it's hard for most people. Like it just eliminates the process of learning. Yeah. Like, yeah. And we're just so different from like just watching stuff on YouTube. Like, uh, not to talk trash on anybody that does that, but it's just, it, there's zero comparison to a guy that fishes twice a month or three times a year that may not even live in San Diego where we where we fish, may live no. somewhere else. That's yeah. just asking so-and-so about the fishing and then um, then then turning that information 
And yeah, a lot of those guys people. are our passengers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, seriously. We're sure yeah. are your yeah. Yeah. Or someone who's, you know, married to a product or brand. Yeah, yeah which yeah, is another one thing, thing we, yeah, we don't that like. we've stuck true to is. And uh, that's huge. That is yeah. massive. Yeah. Yeah. Really and we've, had, nowadays, and we've like, had a lot of people ask us about that. And it's like, no, don't get me wrong. Like, I like your product. But, like, I like all different types of rods. I'm going to fish what I reels. like. I'm going to yeah. fish what I think works the best. Which is another thing where our people, they know that we're not pushing a product towards them. We're not getting we're not getting anything out of it. You know, yeah. we're just telling people what works the best. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's a benefit for us because now we're getting these people that come on the boat that are better fishermen. They have the right tackle. You know, yeah. so and it's making us look better because I these guys are coming back on our boats. Going like, yeah. Man, those look familiar. And then like, are you? Oh, I'm a subscriber. Like, okay, that's yeah. why all yeah. your stuff looks yeah. proper. Yeah. Uh, it's cool too. We get people all the time that'll come back from a trip, message us to be like, "Man, I watched the last couple of videos. I adjusted my tackle a little bit, <laughs> and I caught more than everybody on the boat." You know? uh, yeah, that happens a lot. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, is that is it mostly San Diego people or Southern California or? I think majority of it, obviously, yeah. but it would make like, sense that yeah. your, yeah. your base, like the majority. But of there's audience. people yeah. from all over. Like we get a message from. I've, well, because people fly here to fish too. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Well, many people. Well, that's another thing that. too. Like if if you're making that big, you're buying a plane ticket. You're doing all this stuff. Yeah, to, you better have your like, shit done. Yeah, <laughs> like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna go somewhere and like spend all this money to go there, like I'm gonna do the best. The, you know, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to be to yeah. you know be take ready. advantage of that trip. Yeah. yeah. So if you're going out for one trip a year you know like make it make sure it's good we get yeah. a lot of people that just check out a few few videos before they they have a trip and then they they sign off and they sign back up before their next trip to refresh and yeah obviously we prefer you to stay signed up but yeah if it's going to help you for your trip go yeah for it. so i guess for those people who fish only a few times a year there's no penalty to signing up and signing no. off. Uh, no yeah, no yeah, it's so. just a monthly it's 20 25 bucks a month and you can see all our previous um, information. You can comment on the videos, ask questions, we answer them. You could privately message us. You can read all the conversations between other people on our videos. Oh, that's yeah. It's basically, like, it's like an Instagram. Yeah, yeah. That, you, that is it's, such it's, a good deal. I mean, 150 yeah. videos for 25 bucks, that's like yeah, it's just it's, steal. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. just like an Instagram setup, exactly the same, except um, it's just, you know, it's just our content. And you want yeah. and you just want to stick around because there's more stuff coming from you guys all the time. Yeah, yeah. you're getting the most updated stuff all the time, you know. Which it, is, which is giant because our fishery changes. Oh, it's insane. 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 Daily. insane. Yeah, it's yeah. changing all the time. Yeah. And now, you know, now we have Starlinks on the boat. We could, we're, we're replying to people and making mm-hmm. videos while we're on the grounds. Whereas before, sometimes I would be out back to back three day trips sometimes uh you know it's hard to do something in between trips but now i can do it right. while we're fishing hey this is going on at this very second yeah if you're coming out tomorrow this is what you need to have that is that, as good as it yeah. gets yeah. information wise yeah, yeah you don't really get that anywhere Top else tier so what's um what's the plan for 2024 you said april is when you guys both start running and i think we're march 1st for us march okay. yeah march. yeah we have a big maintenance project this year so as of right now i think it's like April 1st we're going to start running um, if there's fish and if we're done with our maintenance before there you know we'll be, we're hoping to be ready to go but yeah. like I said we get in the day before Thanksgiving and then the Monday after that like we're tearing the boat to pieces to try and get it back you know get it ready as soon as possible that way uh, if fish show up early like we'll, we'll be ready to go yeah cool what's boat work look like for you guys because your boat runs we, we same deal we yeah. busted out for a couple months we have some big projects this year as well and then yeah. march 1st is our scheduled date and if we can get before that we'll we'll go for it wow. yeah that's crazy Early hopefully it's in the all delta islands that's what yeah <laughs> that's yeah. what gets us going in the beginning yeah that's something that's although kind of missing this bluefin year. fishing has been keeping us going very early the last few years yeah, yeah. right yeah that like, early season stuff gets good yeah yeah me me and ira went on with alec on the pegasus and was that second first week of April? Yeah, first week. Of first week of April, we fucked him up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that was one of his first trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was like yeah, first it was, or second. Had to be trip. like middle April. Yeah. 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 Oh man, it was so fun. Um, yeah, there's some stuff. insane fishing that time of year for the last yeah. few years in a row now. Yeah. yeah, it's changing. It's not like we talk about that like it's like early season but it's not it's like not early season that's just when that's when they bite yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's season. Season. yeah. 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 like that is fishing season yeah, yeah. Oh, people ask me all the time like when's the best like time to come out and the last couple of years i'm like two like, thirds of the year yeah like <laughs> april may is yeah. been, like the best you yeah know? what days do you have off check the schedule <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah when can you go just go yeah. yeah yeah you guys already pretty booked up or i i was scrolling through and noticing your 
already had like bookings and stuff because your schedules for 2024 probably went up like a month or so ago or ours probably isn't up yet but yeah, yeah. our schedule's up um almost our schedule's up april till probably uh end of september mm-hmm. but my boat we have we're basically all private charters from like july august september october mm-hmm. um I think we have open party trips up April, May, June. I think June is sold out. May is like halfway sold out. And we still have some spots for April. So yeah, if yeah, if you want to go fishing on the Queen, you got to book like now. Yeah, like yeah. yesterday. Now. Yeah, yeah, um, we fill it pretty fast. What about your guys' charter schedule? That's that's kind of increased quite a bit in the last handful of years. So like, if you're trying to go on a Saturday in August or September, you're probably not going to get on. Just because yeah. we do have private charters then, but. If you're looking to get on during the summertime, prime months, you better book as soon as we put the schedule up. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. we're gonna have to we're gonna have to talk because we do a, a, a just a three, well, I guess it's not a three quarter day anymore. We do a, f- a, full, a full day. day. <laughs> we do a, f- a full day every year, and uh, we want to come out with you guys yeah. next year for sure. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I think we I think we covered a lot here. I'm pretty stoked. Um, I mean, anything you guys got to add, or we can. Join Captain's Concepts. It'll make you a better fisherman. If you don't do that and you want to become better, then you're dumb. <laughs> you're <blown. laughs> it's it's yeah, New slogan. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, thanks so much for coming, guys. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank, thanks for having us. See you us. on the water or something. Hell yeah. All right.